right about two things. The uh, white areas went very pink. Let's see from this rag. Uh, and the magic eraser is doing a miraculous job of cleaning that up. So I just have to follow the stripes themselves and the ones that are most pink stand out the most and then as I turn them back into white stripes uh, the other ones become obvious. Like right now this is really popping out as a pink stripe. The only thing I'm gonna have to deal with um, outside of this is the wood in the areas that I've been working is also turning pink slightly like the exposed wood. So again I can just go over this in white and sand it again to cover up the wood so there's no wood exposed, but I do want some wood exposed. So um, probably just hit it a little more vigorously with either more sandpaper just on the white stripes themselves or um, just hit it with this. And This thing wears away quickly, which is kind of the point, um, but it's doing a good job. So um, a little more of this cleanup to do. Look you how know, pink that is. Oh back in there is super pink. So let's see how clean that comes. And then uh, then we do black stripes. I've discovered the secret to deep pinking and that is masking off the red paint before I try and do anything. Because sanding or magic erasing just doesn't work. Now here's a spot I haven't gotten to yet. You can see it's still pretty pink. Kind of blocking the light. Here's another one I haven't gotten. You can see how pink that is. That's end grain on the body, so that's a problem. Yet, up here, I've already hit this with the um, magic eraser. I'm going to get that middle bit with sandpaper, and uh, it's pretty good. So there's a couple of spots like that I have to attend to, but for the most part, we are almost ready for stripes. Uh, next time, seal the wood before I do the first primer coat so that when you get down to the wood, you're not dealing with wood grain. Because that is the problem. And this red paint's pretty tough too. But uh, anyway, carry on. With all of the undesirable pink spots that I had to deal with, I decided to clear coat the guitar before I went on to the black stripe. Because when I'm relicking the black stripes, I don't want to deal with pink screwing up my white. So I got about five or six coats out of that can of acrylic. Let's sort of get an idea of the relicking I did. That's the leg relicking. There's your belly relicking. You'll notice there's a pink spot on the tip. I could not make that go away. Because I did some repairs to the stripe along this edge, this is the thickest red paint on the whole guitar, particularly in the area of the horns. So if I went anywhere near them with uh, sandpaper or magic eraser, it just got just pink, pinkity pink, 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 pink. So anyway, the rest of the guitar is in the non-pink. A couple of spots, there's another one that wouldn't go away. But it's not really that noticeable, I don't think. And uh, I think I'm being too picky about the details. So this is good. Uh, I'm going to let this dry overnight. This stuff dries quick. Like it says, you can do a coat after a minute. You can handle it after 10. So I was doing a coat about every 10 minutes. And uh, we'll do the black stripes in the morning. We are going to put the logo on today. Uh, the way you do that is to get this kind of fancy paper called water slide decal paper. Uh, it's pretty heavy stuff. It has a paper backing with some kind of an adhesive onto this very, very, very delicate film that's on top of it. When you water soak it, the paper falls away and then you're left with the film. Now, by itself, that stuff is completely fragile and the moment you touch it, you'll destroy it. So, you have to spray this with uh, that acrylic um, clear spray stuff. So, I'm going to hit this. This is just a um, logo I downloaded off the internet, and then not knowing exactly how big it was going to turn out, I shrank it to uh, 25, 30, 40, and 45 percent, I think, and came up with all these. Now, as it turns out, the largest size is the one that is the best match 
for the headstock. So that's, I'm just going to cut one of them out. They came out perfectly. I'm quite impressed with how these printed. I've done this before on another friend's printer, and uh, it turned out with all sorts of lines in it. So it really, up close, doesn't look really good. At a distance, it looks great. But this, up close, looks great. So I'm really impressed. Anyway, I'll spray that, stick that onto the headstock, and then I clear coat the headstock on top of that to basically bury the logo decal into the clear coat and then it's that's about as professional as the professionals do it so there we go we'll get that done and uh, black stripe the body as well here's how to do a water slide you gotta cut these things out real careful like drop it in the water oops I deal with it curling up that's not a big problem and it only takes about 10 or 15 seconds for the deco to separate from the paper. And in my previous experience, the paper just fell away in less than 30 seconds. I think this should go. Come on, guy. Any minute now. When it separates, it's the acrylic spray that's actually holding the whole thing together. Here we go. And with the acrylic spray again, you, I make the thing sufficiently rigid that it's not going to just fall off. Oh crap. <laughs> it's trying to come apart already. Come on, fella. That's why I also have two of these, in case I wreck one of them. So, just lay her down. Slide paper out. underneath the decal. And this thing folded over itself. Let me just fix that. There. Perfect. And now soak up some of this water. make sure it's straight. I don't want this thing to pucker. So this thing's still nice and slimy. So I can use that to smooth it. I don't want to stretch it, the acrylic. And I think we're done. Good. I'll let this dry and then clear coat and the neck is finished. The trick with this, of course, is to tape everywhere you don't want black stripes. And I don't want to waste too much tape, so I'm also going to cut out pieces of paper to mask. Uh, and I'm going to have sort of overspray edges and not clean, crisp, clean, crisp edges. The um, store-bought replicas have like perfectly crisp edges on all the stripes, and I want this to look a little more like, well, that. Uh, except not quite that relic-y, but I am going to relic up these black stripes. I've already clear coated the body so that I don't have to deal with red paint bleed into the white or into the wood. So the black paint should just come off independent of the other colors. And then I will clear coat it again. Okay, here's what she looks like fully masked. This is a heck of a lot of work. Got the stripes figured out based on the pictures I have. The curved stripe there is a weird one, but it is what it is. So I've got everything, including the little strip of black tape stripe, masked off, and here we go. Paint. Well, we're all done, all the paint work. And the next move is clear coat. So the black striping on the body turned out really well. Uh, what I've done is painted on the black and then I'm going to relic the edges away in accordance with the white. So uh, it's kind of hard to see that it, it 
the black line gets really faint towards this edge, but it was an effect I was hoping to get. You can see where in some of my pictures the black stripes go all the way down, so I wanted these to wrap around before they faded out. And these kind of end in the cutaway pockets, which I like. The uh, black tape stripe I kept really crisp and square because it looks like a piece of tape. And faded this one, that's where the uh, taped on line of picks goes. There's another one up here, so I've done a bit of scratchy work up there. And then this one I had it fade off early. Uh, I had painted it right to the edge, but surprisingly, Sandpaper did not work nearly as effectively as Magic Eraser for getting the paint off. So now we're going to go with the clear coat and uh, we're laughing.